Hey everyone, I'm back with another review video, but this time instead of doing a review on my Pixel phone, I'm going to be talking about my Pixel watch. Now I'm going to be going over some of the more notable things like, you know, for example, the uh, battery life itself, compatibility with different bands, and then some of the things that I really like about the watch, and whether or not I think it's worth getting one and hooking it up to a cellular network. Now, a couple of things I'm not going to do. I am not going to be comparing this watch to the iOS version, the Apple Watch, just because it doesn't really matter if you have an iPhone, then this video is not for you. You're just going to get an Apple Watch, and uh, if you have, say, an Android phone, then you're not going to get the Apple Watch because that's not for you. Uh, so really, the only ones I will be comparing this to might be some of the other Android watches, but I'm not going to compare any specific models or brands, uh, and the reason I'm going to do that is just because if you have an Android phone, Odds are you're going to try and stay within the same ecosystem, especially if you have a Samsung phone, you're probably going to want a Samsung watch. That way you can take advantage of some of the different Samsung exclusive features on their watch, some of the fitness and EKG uh, readings. Uh, but one thing I do want to say just right out of the gate, if you have an Android phone, uh, a Motorola or a Samsung, any other type of Android that isn't a Google phone, you might want to look at getting a Pixel watch because unlike some of these other watches, Pixel isn't going to stop you from using any features just because you have, say, a Motorola phone. You can do everything with this watch on a Google phone that you can do on a Motorola phone or any other type of Android phone. That's one thing I do really like about the Pixel devices is it doesn't really seem like they have any uh, user compatibility issues when you want to mix and match out of your ecosystem. One thing that's interesting with this watch and the charger is that because it has these magnetic pins, it can only go in a certain way. The charging cord is always going to go out the same way as the little knob here. I believe they call it the crown. Uh, you can't put it on any other way. It just It's not going to fit. Those magnets are very specific. They don't let you put it on in any other way but the right way. Now, as far as the battery life goes, this watch has gotten a big improvement over the first generation Pixel Watch. Many of you may have heard that the Pixel Watch wasn't very good at holding a charge and didn't have a great battery life. Therefore, it wasn't a very good buy. Well, I can say from experience in the two months I've been using this, this does have a good battery. It lasts a full day. For me, I can get more than a full day out of it because I don't like using features like always on display because I just think that they zap the battery. And it's not really useful considering I can raise the watch up and then it's gonna light up for me and I can see everything I need to see. So always on display isn't very useful and it does zap the battery. I charge this watch maybe about once a day, usually either at night before I go to bed or I'll do it in the morning. That way I can take advantage of the sleep tracking. Uh, but just for example, when I charged this watch earlier today, I got it off the charger at around 11 a.m. I didn't sleep with it on today. And right now it's currently at 82%. I haven't really been using the watch a whole lot today. It's just been more of a pedometer for me. And occasionally I've answered a few phone calls from it, uh, but pretty light to moderate use in my case. But I think the biggest upgrade to the battery that we saw with this generation of the Pixel Watch wasn't how long the battery lasts. We did get a good upgrade in that department, but the real upgrade is charging speeds. This watch takes 30 minutes to get a half charge up to 50%, or 75 minutes if you want to charge it from 0 to 100%. Now moving on, I want to talk about the different watch bands that you can have with this device. It can use all of the same watch bands that were used with the first generation watch, so there are no changes there. If you had the first generation, you're moving on to second, you can keep all of your existing bands. Now this band that you see here is one that I wear a lot. It's probably my favorite looking band on this device uh, with the black aluminum casing Pixel Watch. Uh, it just looks so sleek and so nice. It actually kind of looks more like a regular watch, which is something I don't like about the Apple Watches, though that's just a design feature that doesn't really change the usability of the device. One thing I will say about these silicone bands, I thought that these were gonna be very uncomfortable to wear, and after a while I was gonna feel the sweat build up, but I can say that when I take it out running, I don't have any issues. It doesn't get uncomfortable to wear around my wrist every so often, unlike the metal one where I do occasionally get pinched, and I don't really like to get pinched. I don't know a lot of people who do, uh, but I deal with it because beauty is pain and there's beauty in everything. So uh, moving on to the next band that I have, is a woven band. This one is actually made, I believe, by Google. I bought it at Best Buy, and I showed it to you in a recent short. Uh, actually, yes, it is a Google official watch band, and it fits really, really well. Uh, and I like the blue. It goes with my eyes. 
So as far as the bands go, I really like all the bands on this watch. And I think the reason I like the band so much is again, because the watch face is circular and a little bit smaller. It's not this bulky item. It doesn't have to be big and flashy. It can be kind of on the smaller and sleeker side. Uh, but if you want to get nicer bands, there are some of the metal bands out there that can really make this thing pop. Now I want to talk about the reasons that I actually bought the watch and the things that I really like using it for. The real reason that I got this wasn't because I wanted something for the notification, it was because I wanted an activity tracker. The fitness tracker is a very simple and accurate tool that watches your heart rate over a period of time to see how vigorous your workout was. So if I'm sitting in here and I'm lifting weights and I'm doing something that makes my heart rate go up, eventually the watch is going to beep and it's going to ask me, hey, are you doing a workout? Do you want us to record the activity? Or if I'm not working hard enough and the watch isn't recognizing it, I can go over to one of my tiles and I can just ask it to start doing a workout. Now, if I do that, it's going to start watching my heart rate and then it's going to say, okay, uh, at the end of the workout, it's going to show me how many minutes I had a higher heart rate intensity versus a more modest and a lower heart rate. Those aren't the exact terms that it uses, but when I'm done with the workout, I can review it and I can say, okay, my heart rate didn't really get that high. And then I can kind of take that into the next workout and say, okay, if I was just doing kind of some smaller exercises, maybe just some bicep curls, that's not really gonna cut it. By the end of the workout, it's gonna show that my heart rate didn't really go up that high because bicep curls don't use as much of the body. But if I'm doing things like maybe some, uh, some Romanian deadlifts with these dumbbells and then I move on to some other exercises, my heart rate's gonna get really, really high and by the end of a 30 or 40 minute workout, I'm gonna have proof of that. I'm gonna know, hey, this was a good workout. This wasn't just me dilly-dallying in my apartment, doing some chin-ups and some bicep curls, flexing the mirror and then calling it good. I can make sure that I got a good workout the next feature that I really like on this watch is going to be the sleep tracker. I am one of those people who occasionally will wake up feeling the slightest bit groggy. I let it affect my morning and I tell myself, oh, I didn't get enough sleep. One thing that I really like about this watch is when it tracks your sleep, it not only says when you were asleep, it's also going to be showing the times that you were awake. So if I wake up a few times in the night, I can see that. I can also see for how long of my sleep session was I awake versus in a deeper sleep. When was I getting my REM cycles and when I was sleeping more lightly. So that way when I wake up, if I see, oh, I got, you know, six and a half or seven hours of sleep, I can tell myself, hey, you got decent enough sleep. There's no reason to be groggy. There's no reason to be grumpy. And I can kind of force myself to go about my day and have an actual good day. Um, of course, that's really silly. A lot of people out there might be saying, hey, that's dumb. I don't need a watch to tell me to not be grumpy. But for someone like me, having that sleep tracker and just knowing, having the receipts that, hey, I did get good sleep, it kind of helps me remember that I need to get up and go about my day. Instead of sleeping and telling myself, oh, I need five more minutes, I can look and see that I actually got enough minutes of sleep. It's time to get up and it's time to do something. Now, while it is really easy to send text messages, what I usually just use it for is just to check the text messages that are coming in. Uh, at my job, I carry two phones on me, so usually one's going off. And if it's the one on my left, which is usually the one going off my personal phone, instead of pulling out and looking at it, I can just kind of give it one of these, see what it is, if it's important, and decide whether or not I want to actually pull out my phone. Now, that really just saves me a couple of seconds. That's not a huge deal, but it is nice when I'm actually talking with a customer and I'm face to face and my phone's going off and it's going crazy. I can just kind of do one of these, see what it is, and then kind of silence it and be done with it. Uh, and then I can just remember, oh yeah, I got a call, go back and take care of it later. But I'm not sitting there talking to the person wondering, what is this? Is it important? Is it just, you know, my friend seeing what's up? Or is it an emergency? Is it a family member, someone who doesn't normally call me during these hours? Um, also, one thing that I like just personally, sometimes when I'm doing something like, say, trying to make a video, I'll get a call from a friend. Uh, and instead of just stopping everything, grabbing up my phone, I just answer it on my watch and I feel like a little future man. And uh, that's, that's really cool. Uh, whether or not that's useful, I mean, it's definitely useful. Whether it's worth spending $350 on a watch for, I'm not sure. But it's definitely cool and it definitely makes me happy that I spent the money. Okay, so I spent the money. I've had the watch for a couple of months. Uh, do I regret buying it? No, no, I don't. I'm actually really happy I did buy it. I was someone who kind of fought against the watches for a long time. I thought it was kind of a waste of money, just another way that the big corporations could kind of get us and get us to buy the latest and greatest thing. But I see why they've been doing such a good job at selling them to us because it is actually really cool and it is really useful. A lot of the uses are just kind of little things, things that I could already do before, things that I didn't need a watch to do. Uh, they're just things that kind of take less time now, like checking notifications, reaching out, sending calls and sending texts. 
If it's something that I've already been doing or someone I've been texting, it's very easy to pick up the conversation wherever I left off and keep it going without actually using the phone. Uh, now, of course, I have had things in the past like, uh, say, Fitbits. I've had the Fitbit Blaze, some of the Fitbit charges. Do I think it's worth spending the extra money over that just to get a version that can hook up to your phone? Again, yeah, honestly, the answer is going to be yes. But if you're someone who's kind of a little more on the, uh, on the conservative side when it comes to spending and you don't want to just go out there and just buy a piece of tech because it looks really cool, you only want to buy it if it's really useful, I am here to let you know it is very useful, but it's only useful if you make it useful. If you just sit around and you use it just to kind of use it as a regular watch and look at it, then yeah, it's kind of a waste of money in that way. But if you have plans, if you want to say, pick up a habit of running more often or doing some sort of physical activity, uh, and maybe you don't like going to the gym all the time, then yeah, it's really useful. Or even if you do want to go to the gym all the time, then it's still useful because you can track your uh, activity a little more accurately. Instead of depending on whatever machine is uh, plugged into the treadmill to tell you how many calories you've burned or what your heart rate is, you have something that's constantly scanning your heart, constantly monitoring, it will tell you what it is. And it's not just going to tell you your heart rate when you have your hands on those disgusting little half metal bars that you're you know, really squeezing onto, squeezing all the sweat onto. It's just this small little piece attached to you. It doesn't get super sweaty. It doesn't get really gross. I have worked out in it multiple times and I mean, I mean, seriously, I've had no complaints. There's never a time where I pull it off and my skin is just red and it's sore and it just hurts. No, it's been really, really nice and it's been very comfortable, which is really surprising considering this is a silicone band. I don't, I don't know, I figured my hands or my arm would feel a little more dried out and that it would get uncomfortable and start to chafe. And that doesn't really happen. Um, at least it hasn't happened to me yet. It has only been two months. I will keep you guys in the loop and let you know about developments, what I've seen with the watch. If one day it just kind of craps out and stops working on me, believe me, I will tell you. Uh, but so far, so good. I have really enjoyed this watch. Uh, and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video on it. If you have any questions specifically about the watch or maybe any sort of features that I haven't touched on a whole lot, please drop them down below. I'd love to kind of interact with you guys more often, let you know maybe some of those things that I didn't touch on, uh, and also any ways to improve the video. I will always be happy to take the criticism. Uh, so again, thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful night. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you go out and you get a watch for yourself because they are very, very cool. But yeah, you guys have a great night.